What's up you guys? Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of scoliosis Facebook groups and we're also going to be talking about why it took me so many years to actually join one as well as actually going through some of the popular or frequently asked questions on that group. Testing. One, two, three. So what is a support group? For me, it's been a place where I can share my worries, share my experiences, share any coping mechanisms I've learned along the way, and be surrounded by people that I know really get it. Well, earlier this year, I joined this one right here, Scoliosis Warriors. This one is the largest one on Facebook. So I had my scoliosis surgery back in 2009. Um, that's been 11 years now, and I guess it's kind of crazy that I just joined a support group this year. Back in 2009, there was definitely no support groups on Facebook. There was barely any YouTube videos. I remember searching scoliosis surgery and finding one video and it was the actual spinal fusion surgery. And I gotta say, watching that right before my back surgery was not a good idea. I super wish that there was content like what we have right now on YouTube and also some sort of support group. Even five years after my back surgery, when I knew about these support groups and that they existed, Honestly, I think that by that time, I really hadn't even processed still my scoliosis surgery, what the journey actually was for me. I was mostly just trying to get through each day because I still do have chronic back pain. I really think I could go on and on about all the positives about the support group, um, but I hope you join it or at least take a look and learn for yourself. What I've done is I have pulled a couple questions from the scoliosis group. I thought it might be a good idea to share them on here. So the first one is, I'm <clears throat> gonna read it over here. How does your scoliosis affect your confidence? Mine makes me feel ugly. <sighs> this actually makes me really sad because um, I've definitely been there and even this past year, um, I had a significant weight gain, but I gained almost 40 pounds. And I gotta say, I have never felt worse in my life. Not only did it affect my scoliosis, my back pain significantly, it totally wrecked my self-confidence. I really felt so horrible about myself that I eventually went to therapy. I also highly suggest therapy. I feel like any major trauma or any diagnosis, it can be really hard to sit with those emotions that go along with that and to sort them out for yourself. So definitely suggest the therapist because what they do is they take all those mixed up thoughts and they kind of organize them. That was very visual, <laughs> sorry. What I realized is over the year, this past year, I've actually almost lost all of the weight that I gained. And I really thought that once I reached my quote unquote goal weight, I would be so proud of myself and so excited and feel so good about myself. But the weirdest thing happened and I felt literally nothing. Like besides the physical symptoms of feeling like I had more energy, my pain was more manageable, um, the overall feeling of self-confidence actually didn't come from the weight loss, which I was so obsessed with. Um, what actually happened was through therapy and through working on it, I actually stopped putting all of my self-worth into my weight and what was on the scale and how my clothes fit. Um, it changed for me and my value system changed. So I totally empathize with you not feeling self-confident because of your scoliosis or because of any physical thing that's on your body. I, I completely empathize with that. But... I also know that through work and through dedication and through showing up for yourself, you're able to switch your value system and kind of switch where your confidence and self-esteem comes from. Okay, so second question. Please no negative responses. Oh. Uh, just asking out of curiosity, has anyone had any success with pain management with CBD or medical marijuana? So I am filming this in Las Vegas, Nevada, and in Nevada, weed is legal um, for medical and non-medical uses. So I definitely have tried both of these. I've tried um, strictly CBD, I've tried CBD hybrid um, with a different strain of marijuana, and um, smoking as well. Pretty much, pretty much all forms, honestly. What I have found out in regards to medical marijuana 
is pretty much the same thing that I um, found out about any type of pain management pill. After my spinal fusion surgery, I was on a boatload of painkillers. Um, this is back in 2009. I know that they have changed what they prescribe um, due to over prescriptions. Um, but back in the day, I was prescribed Percocet, Oxycontin, and um, a couple other things. So with that, I discovered that those, those medicines really did not take my pain away. What it did is it made me not think about my pain. Um, the side effects were, of course, major, um, major dizziness, major mood swings, um, nausea galore. Um, the same thing is pretty much, in, in my opinion, um, the same thing happens with marijuana. So my favorite way to consume marijuana is through a gummy. I only have a tiny bit. I don't really like to be high. I like to be just, just enough where I don't care about the pain, but I'm still pretty lucid. I get a CBD and um, indica hybrid. Again, it's legal out here in Nevada. Um, that helps a lot with winding down at the end of the day. And I, I hold a lot of stress and pressure in my shoulders, which affects my spine. And once I have that, it's like having a glass of wine where your body's like, Phew. obviously this tip is only for people 21 and older. That is how old you have to be to purchase marijuana in Nevada. But anyways, um, any CBD uh, lotions and things, I have had almost no success with, um, almost none at all. I have spent hundreds of dollars on CBD lotions. My family has bought me special CBD lotions. Honestly, none of it, none of it really worked. The only thing that actually helps my back pain and my muscle spasms is this right here. It's called Wang Tu Yik. I have a link down below. You can purchase it on Amazon. I love this. I am a lifetime purchaser of Wang Tu Yik. It's basically the concentrate ingredients of what is an icy hot. I love it. It's my favorite thing ever. Okay, so third question. What is the best position to sleep on bed to minimize pain? Um, this question I love because I am such a comfort queen. I love pillows and I am obsessed with uh, researching mattress toppers and pillows and everything and anything that has to do with comfort. I have a very, very uh, strict sleeping routine. Um, for one thing, sleep is extremely important. When I don't get enough sleep, I feel it in my back the next day, and I'm sure you do too. So sleeping well and sleeping enough is imperative to pain management with your scoliosis. Um, I have a special tempur pillow. It's small. I'll link it right here. This is the picture of it, and I'll put it down below. Highly suggested. Um, other pillows that I have, I use, how many pillows? One, two, three, four. I use four pillows to sleep at night. Um, I sleep on my side. I have tried forever to sleep on my back. After my back surgery, I was pretty good about sleeping on my back because the pain medicine just made me sleep anyways. Um, but now, my day to day, I can sleep on my side if I have the pillow that makes my head parallel to my spine and then I put a pillow between my arms when I sleep on my side, my legs, and then I also push a pillow behind my back to support me so I don't um, move a lot in my sleep. And that has been how I have slept now for about nine years, and I don't, I don't ever plan on changing it. Okay, next question. Okay, just wondering, how do you handle going to the dentist? I want to go, but the thing is I am worried about if, if I happen to jerk or move a certain way by accident during my visit and just wondering, does it worsen your condition or not? Because I heard for some people it hurts. Um, I think what this person is referring to is the seat at the dentist office. I have this um, experience with pain and trying to fit in a weird seat at the hairdresser. Um, whenever you're having to like go back in the wash tub, I'm, <laughs> I always have to tell them before I move in one solid unit, I, you just go. So, um, my advice to this person and to anybody that's worried about this 
is to tell your dentist, hairstylist, yoga instructor, anybody that needs to know about your condition because maybe something might hurt you or might be more difficult for you or you might need assistance for it, tell them. Let them know, hey, I have scoliosis, I have back pain, I have a sensitive back, um, and let them know that you're worried about it hurting and see if there's anything that they can offer you. One time I was getting my hair done and it took four hours. And the whole time I was sitting there, I was getting in so much pain because I don't normally sit that long. Any extended sitting, standing, walking, anything, any position for too long, is, it hurts me. So um, it took all of my strength to tell the hairdresser, hey, do you have a pillow or something? Because I am in a lot of pain. And I wish I had said it sooner because by the time I said something, it was actually too late and I was in excruciating pain for the next two days. So if you go somewhere and you're worried about it hurting your back, I suggest bringing a pillow, something small, or a, um, I normally bring like a small fleece blanket and I roll it up and I stick it behind my back wherever I need support. But let the professional know that you're working with what's going on. Does anyone deal with muscle weakness and feeling exhausted all the time? I'm not sure if it's scoliosis related. Every time I get checked out, I get prescribed more muscle relaxers or painkillers, and it all feels useless. I am so sorry. Like I could have written, I could have written this comment honestly. Like a year, year and a half ago, I could have written this comment for sure. Um, Months straight, I was down and out. I really wasn't active. Um, even getting in and out of the shower was very, very difficult. Um, I completely empathize with this. Uh, I was on muscle relaxers for two months straight and different um, uh, steroid packs to help with the, with the spasms. Um, what I found out, what was going on for me at least, I can't speak so much for this, but I've experienced it and I'll speak from my own experience here. Uh, I was about 30 pounds overweight at the time that I was dealing with this. And I was also dealing with some family drama and I was not dealing with it well. I was definitely burying my feelings, burying my emotions, and pain in and of itself is hard enough to deal with. But once you start adding normal, normal life things on top of it, like a family argument or boyfriend troubles or honestly anything, money issues, COVID, it all becomes too much. And that's actually when I started therapy was because I had all of these things going on and I was getting so exhausted and so overwhelmed and I was in so much pain, I didn't even know where to start. So that's when I started going to therapy and slowly but surely I found my way through. And even, honestly, even just talking about it all and trying to understand it for myself really, really helped. And I started fixing things with the people I needed to fix things with, addressing the issues that I was having. I stopped pushing everything down. And it's amazing what your body does. When your body holds on to stress, it quite physically, for me, holds it in my shoulders, my back. Um, when I was going through this time, my shoulders are... I know you'll relate to this. This shoulder is higher than this shoulder. Um, normal scoliosis stuff. Even with my full spinal fusion, I am still rotated and I still have like an 18 degree curve. Um, however, when I was stressed out and I was holding on to body weight and I was really, really depressed, my shoulder was stuck up here. This was the, like the lowest it would go. I couldn't push it down. Um, but me in a relaxed state, it's like this. So you'd actually be really surprised on how your body holds on to stress and the stress and everything that was going on, this is why I needed the muscle relaxers. Um, but working through the cause of all of this is what actually, one, helped me lose weight, two, helps me manage the pain better, and now I'm not physically holding on to my stress. So this is my first video on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching it. I am looking forward to uploading every single Thursday. 
Um, super, super excited. So if you found this video useful, please hit the like or subscribe button, or if you have honestly any constructive criticism for me, I can handle it. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you again soon.